Hello and welcome to the Knight Rider Podcast. My name is Sean D. Knight and this is a show that will focus on the art of writing, my journey to become an author through independent publishing, and discussions about my current writing project. It is my hope that this podcast will help me to further my writing and that you will join me on this journey as I attempt to write some magic and that this podcast will inspire you to write and publish your own story. So let's go on this journey together. It is July 2nd, 2018 at the time of this recording, and the 4th of July is almost upon us. With week 6 behind me, my current work in progress is over 30,000 words, which feels great. As always, I do wish I could devote more time to writing because I want to get the rough draft done as soon as possible, but there are other responsibilities that draw me away from writing. Now, before I get to this week's main topic regarding the one-sentence pitch, I wanted to talk about an article in The Guardian talking about how publishers are paying writers a pittance in the UK and that a number of well-known traditionally published authors are calling on publishers to increase the amount of what they pay to authors. This call out is in response to a survey of more than 5,500 professional writers that revealed a large drop in the number of these writers able to make a living from their work. The report, issued by Authors Licensing and Collecting Society, showed that the average earnings for professional writers have dropped by 42% since 2005 to under £10,500. This is under the estimated annual income of £17,900, which is recommended by the Joseph Roundtree Foundation. The survey went on to report that female authors fared worse, earning 75% of what their male counterparts do, which is a 3% drop since 2013. In order to determine an hourly wage, the survey based its calculations on a standard 35-hour week, which resulted in a full-time writer earning only £5.73, or whatever the UK equivalent is of that, per hour, which is £2 less than the UK's minimum wage for people over the age of 25. Because of this, the number of professional writers who solely rely on this income for a living has plummeted from 40% back in 2005 to a dismal 13%. I would encourage you to read the article and I will provide a link to it in the description for this episode. But suffice it to say, if you're looking to get your book published the traditional way, it would behoove you to seek out an agent to help negotiate the terms. Otherwise, if you decide to go down this path by yourself, I would suggest you don't give the publisher anything extra. Just stick to letting them publish the book in your native region or the region you want to focus on the most. Audio rights, publishing in other regions, movie rights, and even merchandising rights you should keep for yourself and then sell off for more money if the publisher or another company wishes to make more money off of your product. You want to keep all of these options yourself because it can be used as leverage for better deals and can become another way to increase your revenue stream. I just can't help but wonder how the self-publishing scene has impacted traditional publishing since it has been taken off, but that is a topic I'm going to look at at another time when I gather enough information to draw a conclusion. But let's move on and talk about the one sentence pitch. As a freelance writer in the video game and tech industry, I learned to pitch ideas for editorials quickly and had to pitch these ideas often. I had to say enough to make sure that my pitch would interest my editor in signing off on the idea before I could even write it. Now, the one-sentence pitch works the same way. It needs to grab the attention of the agent, editor, and publisher so that they will want to either know more about the book or want to read your book. In this day and age of social media, the one-sentence pitch is even more important because it can gain traction on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and other platforms. On these platforms, you are pitching to everyone, and if people like what they read, they will retweet and share the pitch. If you can post your one-sentence pitch on Twitter and it garners a lot of attention, then the chances are high that you have something that is worth marketing and worth selling. Personally, I think you could also use that as a selling point to a potential agent, editor, or publisher. Never underestimate the power of having a large following on social media. But what should be in a one-sentence pitch? There tends to be three basic elements for an author to come up with a perfect pitch. You need to include the inciting incident, the obstacle, and the goal. In other words, you are pitching the plot of your story. That sounds daunting, doesn't it? It certainly does to me. My novel isn't even done yet, but that doesn't mean I can't work on my own one-sentence pitch while I write my book. Now, there's a reason why I decided to talk about the one-sentence pitch in this episode. 
This past week, there was a pitch contest spearheaded by science fiction and fantasy author Dan Cobalt. Authors with a completed, unpublished sci-fi or fantasy manuscript would have a 10-hour window to tweet a pitch using the hashtag SFFPIT. This would allow agents, editors, and publishers to easily look at all of the pitches submitted and would then favorite the ones they liked and would want to hear more about. Obviously, aspiring authors could write more than one sentence in a tweet, but I feel this provides me with an opportunity to provide examples that are close to the one-sentence pitch before I try to pitch to you what I have come up with so far. There are some interesting pitches, but it also gave me an idea of how vast the competition can be when it is time to pitch my own novel and how to market it. Shortly after the pitch contest had begun, Dan Cobalt shared a tweet that includes some statistics. According to him, during the first four hours, there were over 2,200 tweets from 769 authors. But then he broke it down by age category, in which 46% of the pitches were young adult, 34% were adult, 11% middle grade, 7% new adult, and 2% were picture books. The tweet also used a picture that showed a plethora of words used to pitch the stories. This gives me an idea of the scale of what I am up against as someone looking to publish their work. Looking at the statistics provided by Dan Cobalt, the YA market is, unsurprisingly, a tough one to break into since there are a lot of authors competing in this market. While I have a series that is young adult, thankfully it is not one that I am currently writing. The novel I am writing, however, falls under new adult which, looking at the statistics, makes my prospects of breaking into the genre a lot easier than if I were to shoot for the YA market, though potentially not as lucrative a market. But I'd like to point to some examples used during the hashtag SFFPIT contest and give my opinions on what worked and what didn't. Here's a pitch that was posted by Laura Klein who wrote, Dark Matter meets Back to the Future. After she's yanked forward in time, Eddie's home and life are lost 50 years in the past. She's not given up on getting back to her family, but first, she'll have to find a way out of the mind-bending paradox she helped create. Hashtag SFF Pit, hashtag A, hashtag TT, hashtag SFT. This pitch provides the three basic elements. The inciting incident is the main character being pulled forward in time. The obstacle is that she needs to find a way out of a paradox before she can achieve her goal, which is to return to her family in her own timeline. It conveys the story perfectly and succinctly and, with the additional hashtags, conveys that this is an adult sci-fi thriller with time travel. But here's another pitch, this one a sci-fi novel as well, for new adults from Don C. Jankowski. Daughter of Smoke and Bone meets The Winner's Curse. A princess on the threshold of power. A rebel on the verge of revolution. And a planet on the edge of ruin. I have to say that this pitch reads more like an ad for a movie rather than a book. It doesn't tell what the inciting incident is, provides no clear obstacle, and doesn't convey the goal for a main character who seems to be a princess. Luckily, the author seemed to realize it and changed her pitch in later tweets that actually conveyed the story better. But those are two pitches that are vastly different in their approach. Here's one more pitch I came across that I wanted to offer as an example. This was posted by Meg Walker who wrote, Assassin's Creed meets the Count of Monte Cristo. Nicholas Adair was bred to end lives, to dwell among the shadows. When revenge hunters murder his parents, he and his sister are lucky to avoid the same fate, fueled into turning their skills towards retribution. And then she put down the word count, which is 89,000, plus the hashtags for what kind of book it is. Now, I have to say that this pitch really confused me. What I get from this pitch is that the protagonist is bred to kill people, but his parents were killed by what the author calls revenge hunters. So now the protagonist wants revenge on the people who seem to have gotten revenge for people his parents killed? I'm really conflicted by this because the author references Assassin's Creed and the Count of Monte Cristo. Those are two really great references. Assassin's Creed should be a recognizable name for many young adults, which this book is written for, and could even attract adults who have read The Count of Monte Cristo. Now, I know you can't see me at the moment, but I am raising my hand in regards for the latter. Unfortunately, the author doesn't really change her pitch for this story. For this example, we know that the inciting incident is the death of the main character's parents. The obstacle is the main character's age and lack of skill, and the goal is to kill his parents' murderers. Even knowing this, it just doesn't get me interested. Perhaps it is because I know that the character was raised to be an assassin, and that I find it ironic that his parents, who I assume are assassins themselves, were themselves murdered. It is hard for me to feel any sympathy for this character. 
I'm sure there has to be more to it than that, but as a pitch, this falls flat on its face for me. Let me just say that I am not an expert when it comes to being an editor or a publisher, but I know what draws me in and grabs my interest as a reader. I hope that these three examples will give you an idea for how you pitch your story and a framework for what you should write for a one sentence pitch. So it is now my turn. On my Twitch channel over at twitch.tv slash Knight, I posted a summary of the story before I started writing it, which reads, A young warrior in training witnesses her father, the greatest warrior in the land, fall to a dark wizard. However, instead of killing her father, the wizard casts a spell on him that will make her father forget everything. In a race against time, she must find a cure so that her father won't lose his memories. But along the way, she discovers the relationship between her father and the evil wizard, who is also responsible for the death of her mother, goes a lot deeper than she was told. There is quite a bit going on here, and the challenge is to condense it down to one sentence. A short while ago, in the Knight Rider community discord, I had posted a sentence describing my main character's motivation, saying that it is to save her father who is cursed by his friend to forget everything. I know that the inciting incident is her father being cursed by a dark wizard, and I know that her goal is to cure her father. Before I started writing the book, I would have said that the obstacle was to find the cure, but there are other obstacles in the form of a prince and a goblin, so do I try to include those into the pitch as well? The first pitch to pop into my mind was this. A young soldier watches her father, the greatest warrior in the land, defeated by a dark wizard and cursed to forget everything. Unfortunately, this doesn't convey all three basic elements. This is just the inciting incident of the plot. So what if I were to try something like this? Laura Forsyth is a soldier who watches as her father, the land's hero, be cursed by a dark wizard to forget everything and is now in a race against time to cure him before the Goblin Empire finds out and launches an all-out invasion of her home. This pitch has the incident, the obstacle, and the goal, but the sentence is pretty long at 47 words. I can imagine the agent, editor, or publisher's eyes glazing over halfway through that pitch. Perhaps I should try and combine the two. So how about this? Laura Forsythe's father is cursed by a dark wizard to forget everything and is in a race against time to find a cure before an ancient enemy launches an all-out invasion of her home. I would say that this is on the right track. Unfortunately, it doesn't fully convey the story and still requires a lot of work. This one sentence pitch is something that I will have to keep working on as I continue to write my novel. I think when I am done writing the novel that I will have a better idea of how to approach the one sentence pitch. But let me try one more time before I end this episode. Laura's father, a great warrior, is cursed by a dark wizard and is in a race against time to discover a cure before an ancient enemy launches an invasion of her home. It is certainly more succinct, but will it pique the interest of an agent, editor, or publisher? Did it pique your interest to find out more about the book? Let me know in the comments on Twitter, Facebook, or YouTube. Thank you for listening to the Knight Rider Podcast. I hope you have enjoyed this show, and if you would like to learn more about the current project or reach out to me, then you can follow me on Twitter at Shondi Knight or on Facebook. If you are looking for a community of aspiring writers and enthusiasts, then join the Knight Rider community on Discord. I'll provide links in the description of this podcast. For those who would like to watch my live writing sessions, you can watch me every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday night starting at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time at twitch.tv slash Shondi Knight. If you are listening to this on Anchor, please give the episode a clap. And for those listening on iTunes, rate and review this podcast. While YouTube viewers, like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Goodbye, and go write some magic.